Hi guys and welcome to another monthly plan with me video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Anna and today we're gonna set up this dark October theme. We have quite a lot to go through here as always, so let's jump right into the first spread which will be a combination of the October cover page and the monthly calendar. We're gonna start off from this a little bit different style of watercolor painting today. So first I just took out a piece of watercolor paper. This is from my Canson XL watercolor pad. I taped it into a painting board with some washi tape, which will give us nice clean edges in the end. And it also prevents the paper from curving. So this whole theme is definitely inspired by the dark academia aesthetic that I've seen a lot recently. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically just combining some old school library and poetry aspects in a very dark color scheme. So for this theme, I got a lot of inspiration from some old mansions and libraries with some of those kind of Victorian style decorations. And that's where the idea for this cover page painting came from. I know many of you would like me to do a Halloween style theme, but honestly guys, I've seen a Halloween theme so many times that I don't know how I can make it any different from all the others. But I do hope that all the dark pages in this theme will offer at least some spooky vibes for this season. But yeah, so I found this beautiful picture of a grand piano in front of some tall windows. So I just started to basically sketch this whole scene with a pencil. This is definitely one that I recommend using a ruler for, because having sharp lines for all the windows and different angles here will make this whole picture much cleaner and you don't have to worry about your hand shaking. I felt like this would also be a perfect drawing to practice drawing in perspective because the whole picture was very symmetrical and everything is kind of going towards the center here. So you can see how all the diagonal lines in the top of the painting are going downwards and then the lines in the bottom, for example in the floor and the lower windows, are going slightly up. The point where everything is in a straight line is where our eye level is in the picture, so that's something to keep in mind when you're building this sketch. And I have to say right away that this will be one of those paintings where it's kind of impossible for me to explain every single thing here. Is there are just so many details and steps. I think this took me around five to six hours in real life, so it was definitely more on the time consuming side. But what I wish for you to take away from this video instead is the whole process and the different steps to approach a painting like this. I would love for you guys to concentrate learning the process more in general because that way you'll eventually learn to draw whatever you want without seeing a specific tutorial about it. So for example, here we are starting from the pencil sketch, which I spent quite a lot of time with. And after that, I moved on to the first coloring phase in which we will just add sort of a background layer of color everywhere. So in this point, I didn't really care too much about the lights and shadows or any other details. Our goal is to just add a base layer of color. Honestly, my drawing didn't look very promising in this point, especially since some of these color areas ended up a little bit messy here, but it really doesn't matter and a lot of these areas will end up looking very different in the end. But then after the first layers of color, I decided to darken the initial lines with a black pen. I love to use microns for this purpose because they are waterproof and don't smudge even when you add watercolors on top of them, or at least I've never had an issue with them. I also used pretty thin pens and I think that especially in the window area would have been pretty difficult to keep clean with a thicker pen. But now in this point, you can also start to concentrate a little bit more on some of the finer details here. 
So for example, I added some more lines and details to the wooden corner panel thingies on both sides of the painting. And also something about working with a picture like this in general is that the more details there are, the less all the individual lines actually matter. I mean, you could of course spend hours and hours of perfecting every little corner of this painting and I think that would look absolutely beautiful in the end. But if you're just doing this as a practice for yourself, you can definitely skip some parts here and just add some messy details. A little bit later in the painting, you'll notice how I pretty much just scribbled something random to the window decorations, as well as the grey statue things, and also the chandelier that I drew towards the very end. All those things will look a little bit messy up close, but when you see the picture as a whole, your eyes won't really pay too much attention to small details like that, especially if you sneakily add a little bit of shadows to those areas. Then the reason why I left the piano area blank for a long time was that when you're working with watercolors, it's usually a better idea to leave all the dark details and areas last because it will be kind of difficult to work around them without smudging any of the dark colors. But yeah, after adding a lot of these black details with the microns, I moved on to the second coloring phase, I guess. And in this point, we will start to add a little bit more definition to some of the shadowy parts and also define all the details much further. I used a skinnier brush for this purpose so that we can really get some of those details in here. So you can see how I started to add some shadows to the window panels. And then I will also work around the wooden panel things. We'll add some more shadows to the floor and stuff like that. So in this point, we're just trying to make everything look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more dimensional. And by doing all of this, I think you will really start to see how your painting is coming to life. Then I also painted the piano in this point and I tried to create a shiny reflection to the lid part which didn't work that well. I don't really like how it turned out but I felt like in the original picture it was such an important detail that I didn't want to just make this black. But yeah, after that it was just time for the final polishing phase. So I finished all the scribble parts and added some final lines and shadows. And then in the very end I also added a few details here and there with a white wash, which is a great way to add some light reflections back to the picture. But yeah, I know we've been here for a while, but I really hope you could at least get a little bit more comfortable with all these different steps. And maybe trying out a painting like this doesn't feel too overwhelming. But now it was time to remove all the tapes and reveal our satisfyingly clean edges. But actually, before we're gonna attach this painting to the journal, we'll move on to work on the rest of this page first. So as I mentioned, I wanted to try out combining the monthly calendar to the cover page this time. I've never done this before and I just wanted to switch things up a little bit. So I created this Dutch door flip layout for the calendar. And instead of just drawing the calendar here, I kind of wanted to spice things up a little bit more and create this black background for the calendar part. I'm using a black dot grid paper from my Archer and Olive notepad. I think these notepads are great if you want to experiment with different color bullet journal pages, but you don't want to commit to a whole journal in that color. So I just cut out these pieces and glued them to the journal. And then I also colored this small gap here in the middle with a black pen, just because that small white sliver there was really bothering me. 
But then before we'll finish with the calendar, I wrote the October title here at the top and I used the same black paper for this to get this black outline for the title. Then after that I chose some dark colors that I thought suited the piano painting and created this very simple calendar layout here. To be honest, I'm not super excited about the idea of writing on a black paper because you'll need to use some sort of light pen for it, but I don't use the monthly calendar that much, so I think it will be just fine to write out the few important dates here with a white pen. There was some room on the right side of the calendar, so I just left this for some random notes I might have during the month. But after that, let's finish the last part of the spread, which was this letter decoration on the top of the Dutch door. I wanted to add something simple here that went together with the style of the painting. So I quickly painted this with watercolors. I added a very light layer of this light brown color here to get a little bit more aged look for this paper. And then just added some shadow under the flip part and lastly painted this red wax seal. But now we're finally done with this whole first spread. As always, you'll find this setup from my shop as a digital download and if you're interested to get these setups and some other extra stuff in a monthly subscription form, you can go check out the Journal Away Patreon for that. But that's enough advertising and now let's finally flip our way to the next spread. So here I wanted to try a fully black spread, which is something I thought about for a while, but it just never really suited my previous themes. These black pages from the notepad were slightly smaller than my notebook pages, so again I colored the empty white areas here with a black pen. I also left this one spread in the middle here because I was about to do this window Dutch door decoration here which we'll actually remove later but let's talk about that when we'll get there. Anyway, I started to fill these pages from the left one and since October will officially start the last quarter of this year, this page will be for the fourth quarter planning. These are some of my favorite spreads in my bullet journal and recently I feel like the monthly planning spreads overall have been the most helpful for me. The way I use these is that I usually choose a day in the very beginning of the month and spend some time mapping out the whole month and thinking about the main things I need to accomplish. I feel like that always helps me to focus so much better and gives me such a clear vision for everything I need to do. So after doing this, you can kind of just go into execution mode and the plan is already taken care of. But anyway, I decided to use white paper here for the boxes because I want to be able to write with my regular pens here. Then I added some swirl decorations around the boxes with some of these same colors I used earlier. One of the boxes here is for the yearly goal check-in, so it will just be a place for me to write some thoughts about where I'm at with my yearly goals. I feel like the beginning of a new quarter is always a really good time to check back to the yearly goals and see if there's something you've maybe forgotten or something that you might even be able to take on your plate in the upcoming months. But now let's jump to this Dutch door here. So I started this from a pencil sketch as always and this also required some calculating to get everything as symmetrical as possible. Luckily having the dot grid underneath really helps for decorations like this. I guess my inspiration for this one was some sort of a gate or castle window. So I just scroll through some pictures as I always do to get some inspiration for all the shapes. And then I just combined many things I found to create something that fit my space here. I darkened the same pencil outlines with a black pen and then I started to color this whole thing with watercolors. 
I think this was the point where they started to not match the rest of the spread very well. I think this brown color didn't really go that well with the rest of the colors here. So after trying to make the color a little bit darker and adding some shadows here, I thought I would finish the rest of the page first and then see if I could still make this work somehow. So let's leave that for now and now we can move on to the second page here. And since the other page was for the quarter planning, this one will be more about the October plan specifically. I follow with the same white boxes with the corners cut in, and I also drew some more swirls in here. I was kind of struggling with the black background here, to be honest. I felt like the darkness was a little bit overpowering, and I also had some filming struggles while trying to pick the details up on camera. But I've been thinking about using the black paper for a while now, so at least I got this out of my system. <laughs> I actually forgot to write the titles for these boxes. I was all over the place in this point, to be honest, because I felt like nothing was working. So before finishing those, we are gonna jump to this side bookshelf decoration first. I really wanted to include more of the literature and library aspects, so I thought this might be a fun way to do that. And since we're working on a black surface here, watercolors were automatically not an option, so I went with my new gouache paints instead. Until this point, I've only been using those quite cheap gouache sets, and since I was already running out of some colors, I thought it was maybe time to upgrade the quality of my paints a little bit. I've been using these new ones for a few times now, and I must say I do see a difference. These are so much smoother, and they hold the pigment much better, even if you add a little bit more water to them. Anyway, this was my first time ever trying to paint on a black surface, so I had some trouble mixing the colors. Everything somehow turned out a little bit more bright and colorful, even though I tried to mix some more muted colors in there. So some of these books took a few layers for me to find the color I liked, but I just kept experimenting with the colors and adding some small details in here. And I really think that especially all these small lines made this bookshelf look much more interesting. I actually ended up adding even more details to this before we will move on. But in this point, I tried to start to fix everything on this spread and somehow find a way to tie everything together more. I swear, filming this whole setup was such a mess, especially this one spread was really testing me because I felt like the colors didn't match. I also didn't like the Dutch door and I didn't know what to do on the other side. So I was just absolutely trying some random things here to make everything work. I did finally add the titles to the planning page, so I guess that was something. But anyway, eventually I just decided to take out the whole Dutch door, because I felt like this whole spread just made much more sense without it. We are gonna use it later, so it didn't completely go to waste. But after finally deciding to do this, I added some final details to the bookshelf, and after that we are ready to move on. So next we'll set up the weekly section for October and unfortunately my struggles kind of continued here. So I had this idea to create this book page like layout for the weeks and then create an edge around this whole spread. In my mind, I thought it would be a good idea to create the edge with my scribble washi tape but I also wanted to add some color variation to it by first adding this messy watercolor layer under it. The washi tape paper is pretty thin, so the color underneath will show through a little bit, and I kind of hoped that this would create some sort of aged letter type of effect, but yeah, after it was all done, I just didn't like how it looked at all. I think the same idea could work on some other form of decoration, but as a border, it just wasn't what I was looking for. 
And yes, in this point, I was literally losing my mind. <laughs> but I decided to fix that later. So first we can set up this simple weekly layout here in the middle. So I wanted to go back to the type of weekly setup I used a few months back, which was to make an overall weekly task list rather than listing the tasks for each day. I feel like I've been a little bit lazy to keep up with the daily to-do list recently, so I thought this system would make more sense for this month. But I still left these super small spaces for each day here and this will just be for some appointments or the deadlines I need to remember on a certain day. Then next to these ones I also added a small space for the daily meal prep. So the L's and D's here stand for lunch and dinner. Then on the other side I wrote out the weekly tasks title on a black paper again. And then I'll just list everything here under it. I kind of like the idea of having this weekly list here. So I often have some work tasks that take me more than one day to finish. So what I realized is that this system also motivates me to work hard in the beginning of the week. So I won't have everything piling up for the weekend. I will finish the rest of the weeks later, but now it was finally time to fix this border and I kinda did something I typically don't do in my videos, which is using my own stickers. <laughs> okay guys, when I tell you I was down bad in this point of the filming, I mean I was kinda down tremendous. I personally always try to avoid using my own products in the videos because I don't know, it just makes me feel a little bit weird that you would need to buy the products to create the layout. There's just something I don't like about that, that's not why I make these videos. But my stickers were just sitting on the other side of my desk and they kinda went pretty well with the theme. So since I was so running out of time and patience here, I just went ahead and used them for this one time. I was a little bit scared that ripping off all the previous washi tape would rip the paper, so I just taped these over everything. The scribble washi tape edges were still peeking through here a little bit, and also the fold section looked a little bit weird in the middle. I was so beyond caring about stuff like that in this point, and eventually, even though this was still maybe not my favorite layout, I did like this second version a little bit more than the first one. But now let's finally move on to the last spread of the day. And I promise this was way less stressful than the past ones. And this will be for the monthly review or the monthly reflection. I started from the title here and the idea of these pages is to help you to review the whole past month and kind of reflect on everything that happened. So I usually write some questions on these spreads, like what's on my mind. Then I usually have some space to list some struggles or successes I had in the previous month. And this time I also add this what did I learn question. I kept this page very simple on purpose because the one next to this one will actually be just a full decoration page. So now it was finally a comeback for the church window thingy. So I just glued this on a black paper and then just added some finishing touches to this one. So I thought that usually just adding some more decorations will make everything look better. So I just started to add some more stuff here with white wash. I also decided to add some details around the window and eventually I kind of really liked how this turned out and I was so happy I decided to save this one and not throw it away immediately. But now this one finally finished this whole October layout. Honestly, for the amount of struggling I went through for this theme, it was so unsatisfying that there's really only four spreads in total. And also for all of you wondering, yes, gluing all these extra papers definitely made my journal much thicker. And I don't know how I'm gonna survive using this for another two months. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm so sorry that this video was kind of all over the place, but I still hope there was at least something that maybe you can use for your Halloween themes or the other upcoming winter months ahead. And if this was your first time here and you'd like to see some more journaling and drawing stuff in the future, please consider subscribing. But I guess that's all for this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are and see you in my next one. Bye bye!